Now, on a ship, this would be a, um, a gun port. This is an embrasure in a fort. This cannon is a 42 pounder, meaning the heaviest weighted projectile it fired weighed 42 pounds, a solid cast iron ball. The bottom part here is called the chassis, just like the chassis on your car, your truck. You have the carriage and then the tube or the barrel. You would have at least five men on the gun crew. One and two worked the front of the gun. Three and four worked the rear of the gun. And what would happen is, um, the, say the gun's been fired and it has recoiled. And you, you notice how the chassis is lower in the front and higher in the rear. That's to absorb recoil. Then they're gonna come up with a long uh, pole called a sponge. It's uh, an oak pole with a big oak head on the end of it covered with lamb's wool. They would, they would get that wet, dip it in a bucket of water and get it good and damp. Run it down through the bore to put out any sparks left in the, in the barrel from the previous firing because the powder's in a cloth bag. So you wanna make sure the burn, any burning embers have been extinguished to make it safer for firing. That, that's placed aside, then they're handed up the powder charge. That's in a cloth bag. It could be made of anything from silk, cotton, wool, felt, it's a national material. That's placed in the muzzle. Then they're hand, handed the rammer staff. And with that, they ram that all the way home down to the end of the barrel, down to the breech. Now all the time that's going on, one of the soldiers is back here with what's known as a finger stall. It's like a, a, a heavy duty um, uh, finger, middle finger off a, of a glove, like a welder's glove or something to that extent, with a horsehair patch on the, end of, on the tip of it. And what he's doing is, he's doing what's called, he's, he's putting his finger over the vent. Because as that rammer staff is going in and out and the sponge is going in and out, that's gonna force air out of the breech and out of the vent hole, and then when you pull it out, it's gonna suck it back in. If they didn't get all the sparks with the sponge somehow, that airflow can fan that spark and help keep it alive. Now the projectile is on, it's got metal straps over it, and, it's, and, it's, and that keeps it attached to a, a wooden block called a sabot. Mm -hmm. So that wooden block keeps the cannonball in position at the end of the barrel down on top of the powder charger where you want it. That's brought up and placed in the muzzle and the number, number one and number two then take the rammer staff and they push it all the way down to the end of the barrel. Okay, then they put down their implements, come over here and they have, um, kind of look like crowbars, maneuvering hand spikes. And the chalks are taken out and the command is in battery heave. And they'll put them in the holes here on the wheels and they'll now roll the gun forward until the muzzle is outside the embrasure. And what the gunner is gonna do now, he's gonna aim the cannon. He has this wheel right here, which goes to an elevating screw under the breech of the barrel right here. And that raises it up and gives him his elevation for his distance. So he'll be doing this. That means I wanna push the gun this way. So they all come over here and use this as a leverage point and roll the gun on these tracks, traverse rails with the wheels, to roll the gun to point it to the right. Or if he wants it to go to the left, he'll do tap it to the left, meaning I want to push the cannon to the muzzles to the left. Uh, a long metal wire called a vent pick will be taken out. That'll be run down through the vent hole to tear a hole open in the powder bag to expose it for firing. Then, we'll, then they'll insert a friction tube or friction primer in, in the vent hole. This is a hollow tube filled with fine granulated gunpowder. has a chemical composition in the top of it. Essentially, what's the same thing that's on the end of a match to make it go off when you strike it? It's a friction compound. This is the striker wire. Then you took up, have a 10 foot long lanyard with a metal, uh, excuse me, a wooden handle on the end of it. With a, and at the other end is an S hook that goes in the striker wire. That's pulled out to its full length of the 10 feet. When the gunner has the gun position where he wants it and everything's lined up, he gives a command fire. One of the men on the gun crew pulls the lanyard, which rips the wire, igniting it like a match, which ignites the powder in the tube and about as fast as you can snap your finger, it shoots flame down to the powder charge and the gun goes off. 